Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm with Arizona's Project Wet, and today we're going to be running an experiment that shows how water moves through earth materials. So for our first experiment, we're going to be demonstrating capillary action. What you'll need for that will be two containers that can sit underneath our tubes. These two tubes will be containing a coarse gravel and a fine sand. You're going to want to fill the container that's underneath them with water to a point where you can saturate the bottom of the tube without filling over the top of our earth materials. You'll notice also on these tubes that there are filters tied at the bottom. These filters are so that water can permeate but so our earth materials don't get out. And then the second experiment that we're going to be doing will be demonstrating water moving downwards through earth materials. For that, you're going to be using your same tubes, dried, of course, between experiments, and about a cup or eight ounces of water, you'll wanna get two of these. Great. So before we begin, let's take a second to hypothesize or ask questions about what we think is going to happen. So in our first demonstration with capillary action, we will have water underneath these tubes. Do you think that the water will behave differently in each tube or the same? And secondly, what do you think the water will do over time once exposed to the earth materials? Let's find out. All right. So we have our tubes filled up on the left with coarse gravel and on the right with fine sand. Now it's time to add water. Great, now let's see what happens. Okay, so let's take a second to take a closer look at our earth materials. So we see at the bottom a little bit of moisture. It gets drier as we go up and we can see the sand here. The water has climbed nearly to the top at this point. Pretty cool. All right, cool. So next we're going to be using the same setup to demonstrate water moving through earth materials from top to bottom. Before we begin our experiment, which once again, we'll take two tubes filled with gravel, earth material, and then sand, earth material, and two containers of eight ounces of water, as well as two containers underneath to make sure that we catch anything that might spill out. But before we begin, let's take another second to hypothesize what we think is going to happen. So will the water be able to permeate or flow through the gravel? Will it be able to flow through the sand? And if it does, do you think that the water will flow at the same rate or at different rates between the gravel and the sand? Let's find out. We're going to begin by pouring eight ounces of water over the sand and monitoring how much time it took for the water to go through. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. All right, 37 seconds. Great. Now we're going to take our eight ounces of water and pour it over the gravel. All right, let's see how long it's going to take. One, two, three. Wow, <laughs> three seconds, pretty quick. Okay, so let's talk about what we just saw. When we were watching the water go down through the earth material, we saw that the sand took 37 seconds and the gravel only took about three or four. Now let's think about why this is the case. Well, we know that the sand is finer and the gravel is coarser. So this means that with the sand, there are smaller pore spaces for gravity to pull the water down through. And when the gravel, the pore spaces or the spaces between the materials are larger. So the water can really freely flow through to the bottom. So now let's think about how that applies to our other experiment with capillary action. So what we saw with that experiment was that the water moved up through the sand more quickly than it moved up through the gravel. Pore space is still a really important factor for this, and that's because when the water is moving up through capillary action, it doesn't rely on gravity as a force, but instead it needs surface tension, adhesion, and cohesion. The pore spaces between the sand are a lot smaller than the pore spaces between the gravel. This means that there's a lot more surface area in there for the water to climb up through, which is pretty cool. So when you're thinking about how quickly water moves through earth materials, just remember, if it's going down, it's going to move a lot more quickly through the gravel because the pore spaces are larger but when it's moving up through capillary action, like we saw in our experiment, or like what happens with plants, how they grab water through their roots and move it upwards through capillary action, it moves a lot more quickly through dense material so that the water has something to kind of grab onto and climb using surface tension, cohesion, and adhesion. Thank you so much.